We need to talk about the home buying and selling process because it has changed or will likely change forever. Will it change for the better, the worse? Will housing get less expensive? We got to talk about it. I don't think anybody knows yet. In fact, there are only a few facts that we need to discuss and then we can guess or have opinions on how the business will change. We can talk about the huge wave of inventory that is hitting the market. We can share a lesson from Mr. Beast, also the CEO of NVIDIA. Let's talk about uh, what is going on with the 50, 40, 10 and all of those things. So folks, many of you have asked, so we are going to start with the NAR, National Association of Realtors Settlement. Yes, folks, again, it's a $418 million settlement. But what does it mean? What does it mean to you, the buyer, and you, the seller? So again, there are lots of opinions and lots of, frankly, fear and nonsense. Let's talk about what is in the settlement, and then maybe we can guess what is coming. So there's a couple of things that I think changes the game forever. The most important one being when you list a home, AKA you are a seller, you will no longer, or your agent will no longer be able to highlight the commission paid to the buyer's agent in the MLS or multiple listing service. Why is that such a game changing thing? Well, folks, it has long been sensed that if you did include that and it was visible that buyer's agents would quote unquote steer their buyers to properties that pay a higher commission. That logically makes sense and clearly held water as they were negotiating that. So that change has disappeared. Okay, great. What does that mean? Well, if you are a seller now and you no longer are highlighting what you are paying the buyer's side it is reasonable it is reasonable to think that more and more sellers will not include buyer's commission or it will include a reduced buyer's commission so i think it is reasonable to assume that sellers that sellers will pay less total commission. If we were to fast forward a year, I would guess that sellers total commission paid will be down somewhere between 20 and perhaps as high as 35%. Does that mean housing gets less expensive? Unfortunately, no. Folks, houses sell for what they sell for. They are not artificially bid up because the seller is paying a commission. What will happen is sellers will net more cash at closing. So, okay, it is very likely that sellers, at least many sellers, will pay less commission to the buyer. Okay, great. What happens to the buyers? Well, this is what changes and changes likely in a huge way that frankly, nobody understands. It is very likely that buyers, buyers of homes will start paying commission. Think about that. We've already talked about how the sellers will pay less, but the buyers will pay more. Again, if you were to look at buyer's commissions over the last decades, it was very, very, very small. It is likely going to jump and jump in significant ways. This is going to change the game in ways that you and I do not understand yet. It is very likely if you are a buyer's agent and that is where you are focused, your world will be different. Will it be better? Will it be worse? I don't know, but I do think given my experience that the buyer's side, that economy is going to change into one of two things. 
There will be high services, high touch buyers agents, AKA full commission. And they will work for it and they will earn it and they will do their things for their buyers. Then there are going to be low budget, low service buying agents. Think flat fee. Okay. I don't think there's going to be much in the middle as time goes by. So while sellers are paying less total commission, I think the buyer side will start to pay their portion. Now, what does this mean to the overall real estate market? I unfortunately, today, I may change my opinion in the months to come, but today I believe that the first time home buyer is hurt the most. Why do I say that? Well, the first time home buyer typically is getting in with very little down, typically three and a half, 5%, maybe, maybe 10%. So if they are responsible for some commission where historically they had none, what does that mean? I think it means they have to save more money because again, if you don't know commissions, are go to be paid at closing. They are not included in the loan, at least not historically. Maybe that changes. The other thing that I think happens is there is a lot more people calling the listing agents where you are going to have people double in the commission. Now, I've always done that, or at least I've tried to do that, so I'm very comfortable doing that. But is that a good idea for everyone? Does that bring, a, bring about risks, perhaps collusion, perhaps whatever, that maybe you don't understand? Probably, probably. So again, I think the home buying and home selling process has changed and will change forever. I don't know if it's good or bad. I think the total commission again paid will be a seller side, buyer side. I think it's going to be interesting. I also think that is fair to say that there will be less realtors in the next six to nine months. We will see more people leave. The people that were doing it for the quick buck, the pushing paper will be gone. They will be replaced by the low budget fee only service. Then there will be the rock star agents in brokerage who focus on taking care of their buyers, getting their buyers the best deal, negotiating on their behalf, doing the inspections, doing all the protection, they will likely get stronger. I think it will be a bifurcated market. So that's what I think about the, the $418 million NAR settlement. Let me know in the comments below if anything I've missed or anything you're thinking about. I will be speaking with all of our agents uh, during the week and asking them what they think. Specifically, I am looking forward to talking to Beth Traverso. Beth Traverso is our, is our one and only top 1% agent that comes back every week. I want to know what she thinks about this and what might she change in her business. So stay tuned for that. I will make sure that video gets posted Tuesday. Tuesday evening, we talk at 10 o'clock on Tuesday. So I will make sure that discussion with Beth goes live on Tuesday so we are not putting that out later in the week. All right, what else is going on? What else is going on in the economy? Well, Zillow, Zillow is highlighting that we have a wave of new inventory. It's hitting the market. So new listings have jumped 21%. Good, we are getting more inventory. That's what we need. It appears that the lock-in effect is softening. Uh, as it is up from 20% month on month. So 21% year on year, 20% month on month. We need new listings. Again, watch your buy box. See what is going on in your buy box. Uh, total inventory is up 3.4% month on month and 12% year on year. How can that be? How can we have new listings up 20% but total inventory is only up 3.4% month on month? Folks, rates matter. Remember in February, rates were coming down. 
So we likely had a lot of stuff go pending. Uh, we will see some of that data later next week as we get uh, pending home sales uh, for February. I think we get that on Wednesday, it might be Thursday. Uh, but again, uh, the lock-in effect does seem to be softening. It is interesting to note what cities, what cities have seen the largest jump in inventory? Um, yeah, I probably would have guessed these. Nah, I might have got two out of the three. Dallas, Texas up 39%. Tampa up 31%. And Orlando up 30%. In fact, inventory is up in 33 of the top 50 markets across the country. Folks, watch inventory. Do me a favor, do me a favor. Make sure in your buy box or your city or your metro, you find the median home price. Because what I'm seeing across the country while inventory is building, it's not, not entry level homes. It is the move up or luxury that is starting to stack. Maybe your market's different, but again, please watch your buy box. So what did Mr. Beast have to say that I wanted to share with you? Mr. Beast says, it is painful watching would-be influencers quit school, quit jobs for a pipe dream. For every one hit, there are thousands that crash and burn. Folks, I've talked about you getting your own YouTube channel. I've talked about you as a Gen X or baby boomer starting to build something around your passion, but I've been very clear. You and I are not chasing money. We are chasing impact. We are building for the long term. We are not making short-sighted decisions. We are doing this because it's fun and because we want to help people and build our tribe. Again, we are not chasing money. We are not chasing pipe dreams. Here's the hint. If you wanna blow up on YouTube, be a doomer, talk negative, scare people. If you wanna get paid on YouTube, go do that. If you wanna chase impact, you wanna build your tribe one day at a time, do it the right way. It is worth it. It takes time but we've got time and we have a passion to share. In fact, I don't know if you know this, but on my goals video, which I recorded this morning, I actually added some, a column for how much I make on YouTube week by week on three different monetized channel. So you will see in detail what I make on YouTube week by week. Again, don't chase money, chase impact, share your passion. How about the CEO of NVIDIA dropping some truth at Stanford University? Yes, Jensen Wong is dropping truth on these spoiled brats at Stanford. I kid, I jest. I'm just jealous I didn't go to Stanford. Uh, anyways, so what did he have to say? He said, the best recipe for success is an ample dose of pain and suffering. Folks, life is hard. Being an entrepreneur is hard. Being an employee is hard. We just got to get through it one day at a time. Focus in daily discipline. Get your tribe. Get, get around people that want you to win. Again, the best recipe for success is ample doses of pain and suffering. Yeah, that one. I felt that one. All right, how about the wealthy? We've got a lot of folks talking about it's time to tax the wealthy, time to tax billionaires. I want you to think about this. Please think about this. Way back in the day when we had an income tax, when the income tax was first rolled out, it was only on the rich. Slowly over time, our government does what it does and spent more and more and more. And slowly but surely, we all got absorbed into paying income tax. Okay, great. I know that already. But here's the deal. Here's the wrinkle. They're talking about a wealth tax. That's not an income tax. This is a wealth tax. So the wealth tax, what does that mean? Basically, they look at your balance sheet and they say, hey, you're worth X. We want to tax you Y. 
Again, today this is aimed at billionaires. There's like a thousand of them. Who cares, right? I don't know about you, but I have zero trust in our government because what will likely happen is it will go from a billionaire to a hundred million, to 10 million, to a million, to a hundred thousand dollars because once they prove something works, they will spend more and more money and they will eventually get us all. That is what I think they will do. That said, according to the US Constitution, I'm not even sure a wealth tax is constitutional. That said, I'm sure the billionaires will fight it and we will have resolution. But again, I don't want you to think that a wealth tax is the solution, is the solution to our runaway budget deficit. No, it is income tax and stop the drunken spending. Just stop it already. And then lastly, folks, we have talked about the 50, 40, 10 a lot. It is the lending program that allows investors like you and I to buy buildings with 10% down. You get the seller to carry a second, you get Velocity with their 90, 90% CLTV loan uh, to do the first. I've always referenced that in the deep dive playlist, it is a 90 minute discussions available. I just realized it wasn't available. So what I did yesterday is I posted the deep dive video. I took it right out of the course and I gave it away to you. Uh, I did record it in, I don't know, pain view. So it's not the greatest thing to look at. I should have recorded it differently, but hey, the value is there. Stephen Dow and I break down the 50, 40, 10 in gory detail. We talk about all the options. We have 20 to 30 questions from students. So I apologize for it not being there. It is there now. You can go to the playlist called Deep Dive, or you could just look at the videos that went live yesterday. I posted it at seven o'clock. And then finally, folks, let's congratulate some people for doing the work. Angel, congratulations for getting your next deal. And Dale, congratulations for getting your first deal. Yes, Dale, congratulations, Dale and Angel. Your cards will be going out in the mail. Don't forget, if you wanna do the work, how to get started one rental at a time is still only $3.99. And I will give you the $200 Vegas event as a free giveaway. Buy it today. Spend 400, get $600 in value. It's a great way to go. And of course, join the Facebook group. Have fun, take care, later.